Mike McGarry from the Press of Atlantic City. He covers. Uh, he's been the beat writer for. I, I think he covered me in high school. For God's sakes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Um, 95, I graduated. Were you there still, or did you just start? Yeah, I was. Uh, my first football season was uh, the fall of 93, so I was already two years in, basically, by, right. by the time you got out of high school. Right. So, I mean, I, I, I try to explain, like, look, if you haven't noticed, uh, your industry is in, in a little bit of flux. Uh, you probably have, what, three full-time staffers, one or two that get out the high school games. You got 22 schools in the area, all looking for coverage, and that's just not baseball. That's softball, that's track, that's uh, low across that's crew so you've got about 50 to 60 events probably going on every single day and i can imagine that your story of how the consumption of sports and how you cover it has really morphed from 1993 to today well absolutely i mean uh when i first started at the press of atlantic city we had four or five full-time sports writers now we're down to basically myself and dave weinberg and, uh, you know, we have four or five great part-timers that kind of uh, that help us out and, and really carry the load. But it's, it's a challenge, and it's a, it's a balancing act, especially uh, this time of year in the spring. Now, like you said, you said 50 to 60. Sometimes there's 70, 80, 90 events during the day. And, uh, you know, believe me, we'd like to be at every one of them, but it's a, it's, it's a balancing act, basically. And and uh, you know you try just try to do the best the best you can. What is the biggest challenge become? Is it just the last? I mean, because I always my question is for the people out there, and I don't know that they're complaining as much as uh, maybe they are complaining. I don't know, but uh, hey, my team's not getting covered. <laughs> I always say to you, how has your consumption changed? You know, I'm sure your first is, well, do you get the paper anymore? You know, there's so many things that have changed. How how has the way things change affected you? Well, I mean, that's the part that when you said that, I absolutely agree that, and that's something that hits home with me. I often say that to people, well, do you subscribe? Do you do this? Do you do that? You know, we are like the local uh, deli, uh, that you can't just go to that deli twice a month when you need to order cold cuts for a special occasion and then be shocked when you go there and it's closed. I mean, <laughs> we, you know, we need support on a, on a daily basis. So, uh, you know, you just can't run to us when you want something special but at the same time you know we do want you to run for us and the fact that people say hey how come the press of atlantic city we want a big baseball game how come the press wasn't there we want to be in the press i mean those complaints are also music to my ears because we want to be important in people's lives if they're complaining that means you know they they want us there when when they stop complaining maybe that's the time to really uh push the panic button basically okay now here's where the big thing comes to to the where the rubber meets the road here okay you write for the paper they need you to provide the stuff you also put the stuff online if you don't put it online you kind of lack credibility but at the same time that's why they're not ordering the paper anymore how does that get fixed i i know we in this business try to come up with ways I don't know if you have ideas. I don't know if your eyes are open to say, you know what, there is no fix there um, because we know you guys have tried it. I don't know how much money they're making off of uh, charging for uh, content on that website, but I, I can't say that that's the answer, right? Yeah, I mean, that right there is the literally a million-dollar question. I mean, there's not a newspaper guy in the country that hasn't rolled over at 2 o'clock in the morning, stared at the ceiling, and prayed – for either them to get hit with a lightning bolt to answer that question or somebody else to get hit with a lightning bolt to answer that question. I mean, it's the frustrating part is right now we reach probably, you talk about 1993 or back when you were in high school or something like that, we reach so many more people now than back in 1993. The grandma that lived in Florida couldn't get my story right away. They couldn't go online and, and see, you know, order up 30, 40 pictures of their grandkid playing from a game or something like that. Uh, now they can. Now when you go online to read a story, there's, there's video, there's interviews, there's photo galleries. There's so much more copy and, um, you know, information available. So our audience is bigger than it's ever been. I believe the quality of our product is as good as it's ever been. The question is, how do you turn that into money? And, uh, you know, that's the big issue plaguing the newspaper industry right now well and that you said it we got photos we got videos we've got all this stuff 
all that I'm sure you're probably asked to do more of, probably not getting a raise to do so. It's, hey, do this or you're out. So they got one guy doing now the job of three or four different people, putting out much better material, yet less money coming in. And that's, you know, and I really, you know, we look back at this, and I talk to people about this all the time. And I really think that if you look, you know, when we're gone 50, 100 years from now, you know, history, however they do history, it probably won't be in textbook. It might be on a virtual reality screen on class board or something. They will look back at this era uh, the same way we kind of look back at the Industrial Revolution, the, the, the uh, beginning of the printing press or whatever. Uh, you know, this is re- we're at a transformational time. It's not only newspapers, it's, it's retail stores, your malls. I mean, how many of us order from Amazon now? Uh, what does that mean to the store on the corner, the mall on the corner? You know, it's, it's, it's a changing time, and it's, uh, you know, for newspapers – other certain industries, it's it's a very bumpy ride to see if we can come out the other side. Mike McGarry with us from the Press of Atlantic City. Mike, it's Pete Thompson. I know that uh, I've watched you on the sidelines and I've seen the progression of where you guys would have your clipboards and stand on the sidelines and record the events of a game and how they're going into then now where you literally, like Mike said, are recording some of the events of the game. So in the middle of sort of keeping play-by-play on your clipboard so you can go back and write your game story later, you're also, okay, they're about to go in for a touchdown. Let me film this. Or they're about to, uh, you know, uh, there's a situation where they could win the game. Let me film this. And yet you've got your phone out doing that. I do want to ask you, and I know that that's a, that was a new thing for you, and, and you uh, worked to uh, learn that technology and be a part of that. How do you think Twitter has helped or hurt our industry, the sports coverage industry? Well, I, I actually think Twitter has, you know, on Twitter in a way has sort of helped as far as, you know, I think it lets more people know what you're doing and what and what's going on. I mean, I remember back uh, when uh, Mike Gill was playing inside linebacker for Mainland. <laughs> Mainland would play Ocean City on a, on a Friday afternoon or a Saturday afternoon, and only the people – at the game would have an idea of what was going on at the game. You'd be like, who won that mainland game? I remember, I remember when we first started, uh, if Atlantic City boys played a big basketball game, we would literally get 150 to 200 phone calls at the press at night asking if Atlantic City won that game. Nowadays, we get no phone calls because we have a reporter there or somebody's there tweeting out to score by quarters, big baskets, and stuff like that. So I think it's greatly helped in in that purpose as far as steering people to the content that we have. Again, it's a case of, you know, like anything with Facebook or Twitter or something like that. Okay, I've gotten you to my website. How do I in turn turn that into money, basically? And that's that's the question. On the flip side, Mike, you know, we talk about Twitter. It's great for the immediacy, but the flip side is, okay, if you're telling me everything that's happening now, I don't need to wait for – and there's the problem, right? I don't need to wait till tomorrow morning for you to tell me the story. You're giving it to me as it's happening. Right. And hopefully, you know, again, it's maybe forced us to change a little bit of the way, you know, you kind of write that story. Maybe you're not writing, you know, uh, Pete Thompson ran for three touchdowns. Maybe you're right, you know, writing the basics like that. Maybe you're going beyond that. Maybe you're saying, okay, Pete. You know, uh, Pete had had a rough week. Uh, it was midterm week. He was studying. He was up late. Still managed to, to, to play and, and score. Maybe you're going in there and telling more of a story behind right. the game rather than just unveiling, you know, so-and-so went three for five and hit two home runs and that and that. You're going beyond the basics because you're absolutely right. Everybody already knows what happened in the game by the time, you know, it hits online two hours later or, you know, in the paper the next day. And by the way, Pete talks about, you know, seeing you at games and everybody else that does the same thing with videos and pictures and Twitter and Facebook. A lot of times you're doing that uh, because you just have pride in your coverage. You're not being paid anymore to do all that stuff. You're just saying, look, if I'm here, I want to provide the best product I can I'm not getting paid any extra to provide tweets and pictures and video, but I would like to do that because I'm taking pride in what I'm doing. Well, and, and you mentioned that it's, 
you know, I used to be you used to be able to go to a game. When you went to a game previously, it was like you were in a cocoon. For two and a half hours, you were away from the world. Now it's like juggling. I'm tweeting. I'm thinking about the story I'm going to write. I'm getting video. Uh, my wife can call me asking me, you know, to go shopping on the way home and get milk and bread. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's a circus sometimes at games, but it's an adjustment. And, uh, you know, again, I, li- I like the uh, immediacy of it. I like knowing what's going on, and I think it helps create interest, and I think it lets people know that there are other people out there like them that are crazy about high school sports or crazy about uh, their team or Atlantic City basketball or something. So I think it creates interest and boosts your audience. But again, we come back to that immortal, uh, you know, 2 a.m. in the morning question, how do I convert all this interest and desire for product and, and web hits into dollars. Mike, you touched on it too a second ago with Twitter. One of the bad things about Twitter, of course, is the character limit or the little burst of information that you get is not the same detail. I mean, I think one of the best things that you do that I look forward to during the high school sports season is basically the Friday page that you guys put out. And you often do that Q&A, right, where it's this is what the kid's favorite meal is and this is what their movie is. What's that process like for you? Do you enjoy doing that? And and, and can you talk a little bit about the fact that that that's the added value of why people maybe want to throw down a couple shekels and buy that paper. Yeah, I mean, that's what we're talking about is of going uh, of above and beyond or beyond the usual game day report. That's something that we call uh, my life. And it, for me, it's a blast to, to talk to a kid for like 15, 20 minutes. And you kind of ask them, you know, wh- what how their sporting career started. But then we kind of ask them some questions like, well, you know, uh, you know, are you the oldest in your family? Are you a middle child? Are you the youngest? You know, what do you do to relax? Do you have any hobbies? Do you have, you know, do you have any other uh, hidden talents? Are you a great singer, musician, stuff like that? And, uh, and then we get to send, get them to send us a couple of pictures of them with their friends, family, you know, them when they were little growing up. And it really gives you a sense of, uh, you know, kind of who these kids are beyond the playing field. And, and the reason I like it is I think there's just a lot of great, you know, there's a lot of great kids out in the area. There's a lot of great young people out in the area. And, uh, you know, this gives, a little, you know, the readers a little insight into that kid down the street that, you know, they know plays for mainland football. And, uh, you know, they get a look into his life or her life and just see exactly, you know, that, you know, all is okay with the world. You know, uh, we've got a lot of real good kids out there. And I think that feature gives us a a little insight into some of them. Hey, Mike. uh, Mike McGarry's with us. He's the uh, high school beat writer for the uh, Press of Atlantic City. He also covers uh, a lot of pro sports as well. You'll uh, see stuff on the Phillies a lot and uh, Sixers. Um, Dollars. We keep talking about dollars. As the dollars for your industry, is it more the, lo- the the lack of ad revenue or the lack of subscriptions? Well, I think it's both. I think it's absolutely both. Uh, you know, maybe ad revenue even more. The, the, the thing I think is the other big problem is nobody has yet to, to really figure out what, uh, how many, okay, you get, put up a story that gets 6,000 web, web hits, uh, and maybe was the number one story on the press website from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Like, like yesterday, the story about St. Augustine Prep coach Mark Reardon resigning. That broke about 11 a.m. We had it up on our website. It was one of the top stories on our website, you know, throughout the day. Uh, you know, nobody has kind of really figured out how to go to an advertiser and translate this, you know, this many web hits equals – this many customers in your business or is worth this many dollars to you. That's, that's part of the problem of yeah. monetizing, monetizing the business is getting those, you know, almost like to put it in TV terms, you know, how much is that commercial worth, you know, in, you know, they use ratings in TV to do it. Uh, you know, in newspaper, nobody has kind of been able to figure out, well, what does that mean? 6,000 web sites? Is that good? Is that bad? You know, th- that is one of the big problems, I believe. Yeah, I, you know, obviously uh, we're in a similar uh, spot there, too, and uh, we're talking with Mike McGarry here. So um, we talk about how things have changed and the consumption of sports, and how do you guys decide then this is what we're going to cover today? What What is the criteria for you? Because, I mean, we go through it, too. Uh, we put on a football game or a basketball game. We go through the schedule, and we say, okay, which game is going to have the most interest? Uh, where uh, are we going to get – I mean, is it is that simple, or do you try to vary it? I mean, how do you make your decision on every sport every day with one or two guys to go out there? 
Right. It, it, like I said, it's a balancing act, and it's almost like I have a, a theory how to do it almost – Early in the season, we try to get to as many teams as possible. So early in a basketball season, we will try to hit as many teams as we possibly can, either with a game story, a feature. And we have multiple tools. We have game stories. We have features. We do MVPs now, which are in the paper on Saturday. You know, we pick a kid in each sport to be the MVP. We have the My Life thing that Pete mentioned, too. So we try to hit, a, you know, just about every school earlier in the season. Obviously, as you funnel down towards the end of the season, a lot of it is dictated by winning or losing games. You know, who's playing a big game? Who's in the South Jersey playoffs? Who's, you know, who's uh, competing for a South Jersey track and field championship? So obviously, a lot of that goes into it. But it's, but it's about, I'll give you a perfect example of, of yesterday, and yesterday's a, a perfect example of things to do. When I went to bed Sunday night, I was going to go cover St. Joe, versus Holy Spirit Baseball, which was a game that would basically decide the CAL United division. On the same day, we had Roy Hallenbach of Millville going for his 300th career win. And at 11 o'clock in the morning, like I said, all of a sudden, St. Augustine Preps football coach resigns, and that becomes the big story of the day. So I ended up not being able to go to the St. Joe Holy Spirit game because I was working on the St. Augustine game. You know, Roy Hallenbeck wins his 300th. You try to do something with that. You know, see Atlantic City upset Byron. That's a result that, you know, if I could predict these results, I'd be in Vegas, not talking to you right now. <laughs> right. So, uh, well, and I find – and that's interesting. I, I actually – like – Okay, Atlantic City beats Vineland, which is an upset. Now, you guys send a guy – you have two guys, right, yesterday available to you. If you send one of your only two guys to that game and Vineland wins, you really don't uh, have much there. Right. It, but because right, Atlantic it, it, City it wins, game. if you it if Atlantic City play. wins, exactly. you have a story. And, and, and that's right. where – the consumption of sports has limited your ability to cover things the way that you yeah. and I would really like to. Yeah, and, and I say to people, again, when that happens, we have vehicles in the paper, as I mentioned, notebooks, MVPs later in the week. We are aware of stuff like that that happens. Hey, you know, we noticed Atlantic City got a big win yesterday. Maybe one of the kids – from their team, that's the beginning of a good week for them. And they're at our, one of our baseball MVPs on Saturday or something like that. So, you know, again, we want to do what's, uh, you know, we want to do the best job we can. I mean, I think you guys know, uh, you know, we have a lot of pride in it. And, uh, you know, we want to be the best, you know, the best out there that we can be. And, uh, you know, but it is but it is a challenge. It is a challenge, every day, especially this time of year. Like you said, when there's, you know, 70, 80, 90 events and your school might be playing a big softball game, but you might not realize that, well, the pen relays are going on. Or you might be playing a big baseball game and you might not realize, well, there's a big softball, the Hamilton softball tournament is going on. So it, it, it's a challenge. Yeah. Is there, um, I, uh, with the lack of, of, of uh, staff, is there... Um, you know, back in the day, the coach would call in the stuff. You know, you have a guy sitting at the desk and he'd call in and yada, yada, yada. You, you'd have something in there. Is that uh, not as responsive anymore as there's more technology? Uh, is there not as much cooperation uh, with the schools and, and the teams? Well, we still, we still get pretty good. A lot of coaches email the results in now, which is actually kind of the way we prefer it. Uh, you know, so we actually do get pretty good uh, – uh, cooperation, but it's not, but it's just a, such a you know if you were in our office at like seven o'clock on a or eight o'clock on a Monday night during the spring season, I mean it is really a beehive of activity. There is a lot going on. There's a lot of emails going on. Uh, it, it's really a, you know a uh, almost an avalanche of, of information sometimes. So and then the other thing is we are very re receptive to. To people who call up and say to us, and, and I encourage people all the time to call up and say, or shoot us an email and say, hey, Mike, you know, uh, just wanted you to be aware of, you know, uh, we beat this team or this kid is having a great season or this might be a good story there. You know, we love stuff like that and love for people to contact us and tell us, you know, hey, you know, I, you, know you might have missed this, but, you know, this kid hit two triples the other day or this kid ran his personal best in the 1600 run. You know, that, just love stuff like that and encourage anybody to uh, to call us up or email us. And, you know, if you think we missed something, let us know. And, and you yeah. know, we'll figure out a way to get it done. And by, hey, Mike, so uh, can we put you on hold and take a quick break and come back with you? Sure, absolutely. Or are you covering a game? 
No, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll put Mike on hold real fast, and uh, we'll take a quick timeout. We'll come back. Uh, we got some more interesting things about uh, We're talking about consuming sports at all levels because Mike also covers professional sports as well, so we want to dive into some more uh, on the other side. Sports Bash Live, 97.3 ESPN. Uh, send us a text, 609-403-0973, and uh, let us know. Uh, how you're consuming sports differently and how those things have affected the way you've enjoyed sports. Over there, Mike McGarry from the Press of Atlantic City has been uh, hanging on with us. Uh, we're talking about how you're consuming sports differently. Two weeks ago, we had the topic of conversation via all the layoffs at ESPN and you watching games differently. Now, how games are being covered locally has changed, Mike, and uh, you see that every single day. I just got an email from someone who's listening to our conversation who wanted to thank you for a story you wrote on the Unified Sports Kids from Mainland. So uh, they're listening. They're out there consuming <laughs> us. Uh, you know, we always laugh when you and I are at some of these things. That, you know, we should just do something together. We'd probably make more money. We'd have better consumption. Right. We'd have more <laughs> coverage. Uh, and that's the way it goes. But we're, we're also limited. And that hurts. Uh, you know, as you said, there's more consuming, less people to be able to provide the consumption. Right. And, I mean, you go back to when I first started. 93, uh, 1993, 1994, we had more people and there was less stuff going on. There was no boys and girls lacrosse. There was no Cedar Creek High School. There was no Cape May Tech High School. Uh, it's, it's, there's, a, there's also a lot more stuff out there than is, uh, than is the ones out there 20 years ago when you had bigger staffs to, uh, to follow it. So it, it's all great stuff, but it, that's just another one of the challenges. Yeah, and overall, you know, you look at uh, – you put something in the newspaper, you put it online, um, as you probably are well aware, regardless of who you cover and what you cover and how you do it, you're always leaving somebody out. Yeah, I mean, it's it, like I said, I pointed to yesterday was the biggest – was uh, a dilemma. You had a big story about the St. Augustine football coach. You had a big game, St. Joe Holy Spirit baseball. You had Roy Howard back up Melville, a great guy reaching a milestone win. So, uh, I mean, it's always – people don't remember. It's like there's – you know, like you said, there's 22 or 23 Cape Atlantic League teams, plus we cover four schools in Ocean County, plus there's your Atlantic Christians, your Cumberland Christians, and all of those schools have four or five sports, you know, boys and girls teams, you know, 10 to 15 kids on a team, and, and there's just great stories. There's great stories everywhere out there. Uh, but there's almost like not enough time in the day to sort of get to them all, although we try. M Mike, you talked about some of the non-traditional sports that are out there, too. I mean, Mike Gill and I both know that football and basketball are generally the kings of the high school sports picture. But at the same time, don't you find, and I think I've always found, that when you go to something that's a little bit off the beat, path, say you go out to Lake Lenape and you're going to cover some crew and they go, hey, you want to get in a boat? Well, not really, but I appreciate the effort, you know, that they're so <laughs> thankful that you showed up. Yeah, I mean, crew is, again, a sport that's sort of unique to uh, our area. And, again, you mentioned, like, the, the growth of sports. When I first started, there were two crew programs, Atlantic City and Holy Spirit. Now just about every school in Atlantic County has a great crew program. And I can tell you right now that crew parents are just among the most diehard fanatics, uh, you know, we've ever come in contact. So, so we love all of them. But you're absolutely right. Sometimes there's a tendency to look at football and basketball and baseball, but there's great stuff. I mean, I love cross country in, in the fall. You know, uh, there's some tremendous stories in, in, in cross country. You know, there's some tremendous stories in swimming, especially in our area. So like you said, there's, there's a, a whole range of sports at these schools that are really tremendous to cover. And that's why, you know, when we look online and our HS Live app and stuff like that, there is a huge appetite for this sort of coverage. Again, we come back to that three o'clock in the morning question that keeps us <laughs> tossing and turning how do we how do we turn it into dollars basically I, concrete I've, dollars yeah i've never asked you this question before but i'd like to now I, I, which season is the hardest to cover is it fall winter or spring uh the fall is probably the easiest because you know you just get in the rhythm of football which is you know friday nights and saturdays and the preview stuff sort of flows from there i mean it's probably the spring season which is the most hectic because it's the shortest season it has the most sports it has the worst weather so not only is it the shortest season but it seems to all get condensed into about three weeks after there's four weeks of rain in april and early may 
uh, and there's just a tremendous amount of sports going on. So it probably is just sort of kind of keeping your head above water which, with kind of all the stuff that's going on in the spring. I know, um, you know, recently, uh, this Saturday, you, you and Kevin both do the Saturday show with us, South Jersey Sports Report, every Saturday. And I know uh, people love consuming that stuff, right, and, and listening to that specialty show on Saturdays. And, and of course, Kevin uh, laid off uh, a guy that you know and been covering. Man, how long was he working there? I mean, he's the same way. I mean, 25, 30 years with a combination of the Gloucester County Times when it was and the Courier Post. And, and I think that's sort of, you know, uh, the reaction. Kevin got a great reaction from people, from the people he covered. He, he, he does a great job and kind of people couldn't believe it. But, uh, you know, I hope in a way it sort of woke people up to the fact that, hey, if I like this sort of coverage, maybe I'd better go subscribe. Or better, maybe instead of, you know, taking my 10 free articles and then refreshing my history and emptying my cachet of my browser, <laughs> maybe I should pay the five ninety nine to subscribe to this online stuff or something like that. Because, you know, it, it's proof that it's not – there's no guarantee that you're going to – you know, that things are going to continue. In fact, the one constant you would look at now with the way the world is would be change, you know. So, uh, again, we come back to – you know, the point of you can't go to that neighborhood deli, you know, for one cold cup platter every three months and uh, expect it to be there every time you need it. Yeah, man, I, I know uh, we're all in the same challenge. I mean, especially, you know, we don't cover nearly as much uh, high school stuff. You guys, uh, would you say, I know Dave covering the Eagles is probably uh, the top of the totem pole, uh, but your coverage is probably, if not uh, 1B, it's it's right there up next to it, right? Yeah, I mean, the paper's commitment to, to high school sports is really kind of the hallmark of our of our paper. I mean, it's really kind of what we stand behind or the, you know, the guiding principle of the, uh, you know, of the sports department is, is to cover the local stuff. And, and, and that's put a big emphasis on high school. So that is kind of our, you know, uh, to use another outdated metaphor, if we're like wandering in the sea, the, the high school sports is that light in the lighthouse on shore that we're kind of always focused on and always trying to get to. So yeah. that, that is, you know, that is the guy and everything sort of peels off of that, you know, but the, the number one thing for the, for the paper is its commitment to covering, you know, high school sports and, and local events and stuff that you can't get anywhere else, but the press of Atlantic city. Well, uh, yeah, you, as you mentioned, uh, there's so many challenges. We're all trying to do the best. And that's the key here is that I think the listeners and where the conversation started from, and this goes for pro sports, which we focus more on here on the Sports Bash. Sure, we do our high school coverage. Uh, I certainly wouldn't say we're rivaling or competing with what Mike does uh, at the press or Mike Frankel, who, by the way, has just called in. We'll get some comments from him in a second uh, where what he does. Uh, we provide a service more so than coverage, I would say, right? I mean, that's kind of what we're doing. We are trying to provide a service more so than than blanket coverage. We have our specialty shows on Saturday. Uh, we do do game coverage. Friday nights we'll do stuff. But we're really more doing a service where you guys are doing coverage. And I think we all understand that we're all trying to put out the best service and coverage for everybody for all the sports, from pro all the way down uh, to the high school and even sometimes youth leagues. Yeah, and, I, and I'll just say one last thing, I, and I don't want to give people the wrong idea that it's, you know, uh, I mean, we are, we are all having a, a, a blast. I still think it's, you know, I still tell people all the time when I see them, you know, I have, I have the, a great job. You know, I go to games for a living. I get to meet fantastic people, uh, you know, fantastic kids, coaches. Uh, it, it's just a blast. So while uh, the financial realities of the situation are tough right now, I mean, I, I still believe that there's a need for this product. I believe that people uh, want it, and I believe that we're going to figure it out, and, uh, and, and everything is going to be fine. And while we do that, we will continue to have all the fun uh, that we have, you know, uh, covering these great events and, uh, you know, uh, meeting these tremendous people. Mike McGarry with us. And Mike, just as you were talking there, I looked on Twitter and there's a political-ish cartoon up that says, it feels pretty great to be a reporter. And then the next panel says, exposing the corrupt, holding those in power accountable, acting as the public's watchdog. And then the phone rings and the guy says, in fact, that's probably an informed reader calling to thank me now. And he answers the phone and it says, today's crossword was missing from my newspaper. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, Mike, appreciate it, man. We'll talk again soon. 
All right, thanks, guys, and, and good luck to PT with the three from the guys today. My money's on him, so there you go. <laughs> All right, McGarry. I love it, baby.